Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so glad once again to be bringing God's truth to you. Praise God. Now, we have been talking about the prophecy that God gave to Jeremiah. He gave the same prophecy to Joel. Praise God. And what is this saying? He's saying, I'm going to release my spirit on everyone. That's all his children. And then the aim, the aim is that everyone will know God for themselves. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we bless you today. We receive your truth. And we allow your plan expressly to be fulfilled in us. Thank you, Lord, because even right now, burdens are being lifted. Yokes are being destroyed by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for healings that are taking place already. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. So, Jeremiah said the same thing as Joel. And let me add one also to you. Isaiah said the same thing. Isaiah 54 and verse 13. He says, And all your children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be their peace. I love that. Now, what's the saying? Now, we use that scripture in praying for our little children. You understand? We, we claim it as a prophecy. You know, our children shall be taught of the Lord. But then you see, the, this, the, the prophecy primarily is referring to the children that is we now, see? After that generation, the children of that generation. So when this prophecy fulfilled, your children, see? So God would have said, I will pour out on your children. See? You understand it now? So he wasn't just talking about little children. But of course, you, you claim that also for your little children. See? Now then. He says, all your children shall be taught of the Lord. How do you think that's going to happen? That's the same thing God meant when he told Jeremiah, I'll put my laws in their hearts and in their minds. It's the same thing. It's the same thing he meant when he says, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your children, your sons and daughters will begin to prophesy. It's the same thing he's saying. See, now you see, when you bring all these prophecies together, you see the workings. Now I'll show you something Jesus said in John chapter 15. John chapter 15. Let's go there quickly. And then we go back to Joel. John 15 and verse 3. It says, John 15, 3 says, Ye, You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. It says, You are already clean. Remember, Jesus said, I am the vine. My father is the husband man. And then you are the branches. Any branch in me that doesn't bear fruit, my father um, cuts off. See? He cuts off. Then any branch that bears fruit, he prunes so that it will bear much fruit. So he now says that you are pruned, you are clean because of the words that I have spoken unto you. Let me read it from the Amplified Classic. I wanted to show you something there. It says, you are cleansed and pruned already because of the word which I have given you. In bracket, he now says, the teachings I have discursed with you. See? So those teachings... Remember, Isaiah says, all your children shall be taught by the Holy Ghost. That's actually what he was referring to. When he says taught of the Lord, he's saying taught of the Holy Ghost. Do you remember Jesus said, when the Holy Ghost comes, he will teach us all things. Praise God. So the fulfillment of the prophecy of Jeremiah cannot be except when the Holy Ghost comes. And now that's where Joel comes in. Joel explains that the Holy Ghost is coming. When the Holy Ghost comes, I'll pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters will begin to hear the voice of God. And they will begin to speak as they are led by the Spirit or as they hear. Now let's go back to the book of Joel. I want to show you something there. Very, very important. And we begin to go into the essence of why I'm sharing these things with you. Joel 2 and verse 28. It says, and it shall come to pass afterward, afterward afterwards so something must happen before this outpouring takes place i told you was it on monday or last week i told you that peter spoke up and declared that this is that which was spoken by the prophet joel 
But I told you something. He wasn't talking about this verse 28. He was talking about verse 23. Because God says, I will release the rain moderately. Then afterwards, I will cause the rain to fall. The former rain and the latter rain will come together. Now that's the full outpouring. Because Peter says, quoting Joel, but speaking by the Spirit. You need to understand this also. He said, I will pour out of my spirit. Joel didn't say, I will pour out of my spirit. Joel said, I will pour out my spirit. And I explained the difference to you. To pour out of. You know, if I have a glass of water and then I'm pouring out, he's tell me, can you pour out of that water? And I'm going to be pouring it out in measures. And then, is that, is that enough? Uh, pour some more. Is that enough? Okay, okay, that's fine. Now, when I say pour out the water in this glass, what do I mean? Just go and pour everything. Now, don't come back with anything in the glass. Joel said, I will pour out my spirit. Peter, referring to Joel, but by the spirit, says, I will pour out of my spirit. So, was there a mistaken prophecy? No, there, is, there wasn't. I'll tell you what was going on. This is what was going on. Joel prophesied from verse 23. When he says, I've given you the rain moderately. So, what happened on the day of Pentecost was the first release of the spirit the first release of the outpouring of the spirit but then something was going to happen between then and now i want you to follow me carefully now now he began to say be glad then verse 23 book of joel be glad then ye children of zion and rejoice in the lord your god for he has given you the former rain moderately and will cause the rain to come down for you the former rain and the latter rain in the first month. Then verse 24, it began to tell you the result of that rain. When that first outpouring is released, what happens? It says, the threshing floor shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with new wine and oil. So I will restore to you the years the, sw the swarming worm, the swarming locust has eaten, the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust. My great army which I send among you, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. So, hey, Hey, the result of the first outpouring is supposed to cause this to happen. It's supposed to bring forth a restoration. It's supposed to bring forth um, an overflow of prosperity. That's why it says the wine and the oil, an overflow of prosperity. Then it's supposed to bring forth a restoration. The years that have passed, the years that the locals have eaten. God says, I'll restore it. And all these things, He says, you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. So before the full outpouring. God is not pouring out His Spirit upon broke people. God is not pouring out His Spirit upon physically hungry people. No. He will first of all take care of their hunger. He will first of all take care of their finances. He will take care of their, their meeting their needs. So God is not pouring out His Spirit upon people who are just hoping, Oh Jesus, we are tired of this world. Please just come. No, sir. I want you to get this clear. This is a prophecy. And Joel itemized the, 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 the sequence in which these things are going to happen. So he says, You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. Then you shall know that I am the Lord in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God and there is none else. And my people shall never be put to shame. Now, after this happens, not us, after his people, that is we now, after we get to that place where we can never be ashamed. Why? Not, not carrying a bone face and say, I, I can never be ashamed. No, truly, we begin to see the result. You know, we've been telling people about serving the Lord and loving the Lord, and they are looking at us like we don't know what we're doing. But we'll get to that point and say, see what the Lord has done. See what the Lord, that will become our testimony everywhere. We'll be rejoicing in the Lord. We'll be praising the Lord. And then he says, when, when we get to that point, then... The full outpouring of the Spirit is going to take place. Now, that's where the church is right now. The church is in the season of restoration. I want you to understand what I'm telling you. We are in the season of restoration. God is restoring all things. Now, you say, how do I know that God is restoring all things? I want you to get this. If you miss this part, you miss everything. Now, when God says, I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, you just sit down there and be looking for somebody to call you and tell you, ah, 
that contract you lost 10 years ago. Ah, something has happened. Oh, they are calling you back to come and do that job. Praise God. God said it. Hey, when God is bringing restoration, the first thing that he sends to us is his word. Because let me tell you something. You cannot take the same mindset by which you, the locusts ate from you to bring a restoration to you. It doesn't work that way. The mindset that allowed the locusts to eat your, your stuff cannot be the same mindset that will bring restoration. So God sends his word, first of all, to cause us to renew our minds. That's what the word of God does to us. When God sends his word, our minds are expanded. Our minds are renewed. So we see things better. We repent. It brings repentance to us. You understand what I'm saying? So when the word of God comes, you find yourself repenting. You find yourself saying, wow, I never knew it was like this. I never knew I could have believed God. If I had known, I would have trusted in the Lord. You find all this happening in your heart. Now what's coming? What's coming next? What's coming next is the physical restoration. So God, first of all, he's sending his word. And as he's sending his word, you that is receiving his word is having a renewal of your mind suddenly you are beginning to realize i shouldn't have thought that way i should have thought this way oh this is the way to think now oh that that's not that you know you you all these things are being processed in your mind and then you realize that how big god is thank you lord jesus with that renewal of mind with that change of mindset you begin to declare God's truth over your life. You begin to declare God's abundance over your life. And then what's going to happen when you begin to see that? Because now you have the right mindset. And then the blessing begins to physically show itself. Many of us are waiting for the physical blessing to show. Without going through the spiritual process of mind renewal. Now how do you renew your mind? You don't just say, oh, I'm not doing this again. No, renewing the mind is submitting the mind to the thoughts and the truth of God's word. There are lots of things God has shared that are expressed in scriptures. And, and, and sometimes you find believers, they find it hard to believe. See? When he says, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. Now we confess it. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. Have you thought about what it means by all your needs? Now think about it. Now I want you to think about it. Hey, 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 hold on. Hold on, hold on. If you win a lottery, or for whatever reason, you know, you get a letter from, um, from a shop, and they say, Hey, sir. Hey, madam. For the next three years, we are going to supply all your grocery needs. Now, what do you understand with that kind of statement? What are you going to do with that statement? You know, it's written and they wrote to you to tell you. From the, for the next three years, beginning from today, the 9th of March, we are going to no, to beginning from today, we are going to supply all the groceries in your house. Now, what does that mean? Automatically, they are telling you, quit thinking for the next three years about groceries. If you need anything, talk to us about it. So when we say, my God shall supply all your needs, you confess that and then you say, oh, why are you going out so early, man? I've got to put food on my table. He <laughs> said the contradiction of your life. You know why? Lack of understanding. Now that, that is where you need to repent. You know, even as I'm saying, as someone say, so what are you trying to tell us to do? You are dealing with unbelief. Are you trying to say that uh, we, we should sit down at home? You are dealing with unbelief. I'm telling you the truth. Until that mindset changes, you will not even know why you should work. Because right now, all you can think about working is the salary. So if they tell you, hey, I think you should stop working next week, what's the first thing that's going to hit your mind? Don't be sincere with yourself. What's the first thing that will hit your mind? Imagine, they say, 
from next week, sorry, we will not need your services anymore. We're downsizing. We, we, the, the economic situation is hitting hard on us, so we have to downsize. I, the first thing that will cross your mind, is it, is it going to be, ah, praise God, I will now have time to really rest. Is that the first thing that's going to come to your mind? Be honest with yourself. What's the first thing that's going to come to your mind? B, so no more salary. Ha, ah, how do I get a new job? How do I get, you see, now when, when that's the first thing that comes to your mind, oh, you need to repent. You don't understand God and his ways. Praise God. I'm going to stop here today. We'll continue tomorrow. Listen, keep your mind on God's truth and let it renew your mind that you begin to think God's thoughts and live the godly life. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.